Hi, and welcome to Factaganda number four. Those of you who are paying attention might have noticed a slight discrepancy between last week's declared number and the actual number that showed up on YouTube. And to those people, we say, get over it. Um, but speaking of episode number two, um, you know, I, I did my best. I pulled out the cello. I had the nice little picture of the Grand Canyon. And about a week later, the Cosmos episode comes out where they discuss exactly the same topic. And instead of a picture of the Grand Canyon, they have an animated thing where they separate all the layers. Freaking nightmare. Go watch that episode instead, please. Um, in fact, why don't you get a hold of the entire episode, the entire series of, of Cosmos? In fact, both series, both written by Andrewian and others, and both brilliant. Um, Carl Sagan deeply influenced me as a child, and, and I'm sure that one of those two series is going to find a deep place in your heart as well. Uh, if you like other sciencey goodness, there's always uh, This Week in Science uh, with our favorite, you know, Dr. Kiki, uh, who has just celebrated their 500th episode. So uh, I'll see what I can do about putting something down here and uh, let you click on that to uh, get over to This Week in Science and see what they're all about. And then, of course, uh, one of my favorite movies in, in the sciencey goodness realm is something called Mind Walk. It's a um, conversation between a particle physicist, a poet, and a, and a politician. Most of the information is still relevant, despite the fact that it was made in the 80s. And uh, it's it's a wonderful film shot in a French castle. I'm sure you'll love it. So, uh, last time we discussed uh, if 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 there are, if chimps or if humans evolved from chimps, why are there still chimps? And I thought we had it pretty much nailed, but um, unfortunately not to the to the satisfaction of the person who originally asked the question. So uh, we're going to try to plunder on here and see if we can get this nailed down a little bit. Now, um, <clears throat> most of the time when you get asked this sort of question, people seem to think that maybe entire populations will evolve all at once, like, like a Pokemon game. Uh, for those not familiar, you'll have a Charmander, which is a little thing that kind of looks like a dragon, you know, has some fire, uh, doesn't have any wings or anything like that. And you'll fight him with other Pokemon, and eventually he'll get enough experience that... He Big flash of light, and ta-da! You have a Charmeleon there, and he's got little wings, and now he can do other things and all that stuff. No. Evolution happens in individuals. Um, <clears throat> so what I'd like to do is I'd like to discuss a point of evolution that's happening right now as we speak. Uh, the human eye has uh, three chromatids, uh, the white, black, uh, the gray spectrum uh, of the rods, and two types of cones, one that covers uh, the blue-yellow, uh, which uh, we probably developed while we were still ocean-going, uh, with uh, yellow being everything important and blue being everything kind of boring. And then um, another cro uh, another chromatid, um, another cone call, uh, that covers the red-green spectrum, and this evolved when we came onto land and everything was green and boring until we came across things that were red and important, like predator's tongue or the glint of an eye, things like that, berries, nuts. Um, <clears throat> so um, we have these three chromatids, which allow us to see millions of colors. Um, but there are women out there right now who are tetrachromatic. They have four chromatids, and that extra chromatid um, lets them see a, a wide number of shades. It is estimated somewhere in the billions of colors. And mo most importantly for this discussion, lets them to see into the infrared spectrum. That's the spectrum that's used on most uh, television remotes. And if you take this thing, you point it at your eye, and you click the button, you will not see the little LED light up. Why? Is it failing to work? No, it's working fine. It's just that LEDs, unlike you know standard screw and light bulbs, produce a spectrum that is typically very very narrow. When it's a red LED, it's that you know one little sliver of the red spectrum, not the whole thing. Um, very pure light. 
So this thing is producing a very pure infrared light that is just outside the range of our vision. That way you can use it and not be seeing red beams bouncing around all, all over the place. However, it's possible that some of these tetrachromatic ladies can, okay? So, um, now here's the thing. Uh, we're not sure where this comes from and we're not sure why it's only women at this point, but a few uh, guesses can be made based on this. For example, it, we can guess that the gene for tetrachromacy exists only on the X chromosome, the, the sex chromosome for women. Um, and it's also possible that it requires two genes together to make a tetrachromatic woman. Otherwise, we'd be able to easily trace the, the genetic line. If it was a single female, we'd just track her lineage back until we hit the same lineage as another woman who was tetrachromatic, and voila, we'd find person zero who evolved this gene. So um, it's probably a little more complex than that. But let's just say, for example, that, that, that the simpler answer was the case, and that four or five generations back, some woman had a mutation that allowed her to um, uh, express tetrachromacy. And we didn't find out about it until recently when, you know, TV remotes came out. Because, I mean, everyone says, wow, look at these colors. And everyone else goes, wow, you're right, they're beautiful. And, you know, when you only see a few of them, uh, you know, a couple of million, uh, that's awesome. But when you see billions of them, that's really awesome. And unless you have something that you, that you can definitively see that other people cannot. Like, for example, on the reverse side of it, if somebody is uh, blue-green colorblind, they cannot tell the difference between blue and green light. It's all just sort of one aqua color, I guess, or something. Never actually known. Um, so they had no way of expressing the fact that they were superior <laughs> to the rest of us. Um, now, the crucial part is, is, does having this extra capacity to see more colors and, uh, and to see into the infrared give them an advantage in any fashion? No. There is the possibility that, you know, around the corner in the zombie apocalypse, being able to use this like a like a heat vision and saying he's too hot and he's too cold and he's just right, you know. Okay, save the guy in the middle and shoot the other two. We don't know. Um, it's possible that nature will find a way to make this useful, and it's also possible that it will never ever come into use. So, if if these women are not selected for or against, they'll just sort of migrate into the population until that gene is, you know, has a selection or until everyone's tetrachromatic. Um, <clears throat> but more likely, they'll just sort of continue to, to migrate and, and some portion of the population, say 10% or so, will end up being tetrachromatic and the rest of us won't and it'll be a big who cares except for like certain particular artists that specifically paint for tetrachromids only and you know maybe uh during the revolution they'll find some sort of infrared paint or something like that so they can paint on walls and send secret messages to tetrachromids only um maybe we don't know but for the most part it's not a big deal if it were a big deal, if seeing into, into infrared were some sort of magic periaft to wealth and fame, you betcha these women would be in great demand, more than redheads, uh, and would uh, be sought after by vast numbers of people. They would then produce more children and those genes would get passed on to greater and greater numbers. And this is how a population changes one person at a time. Have a good one. This has been Fact Again Before.